Coming up, we're going to talk about the Universal Mardi Gras concert lineup for 2017. Uh, also, we are going to talk about our dining review of Confisco Grill at Islands of Adventure and probably a little bit more. Live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 112 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition, second episode of the year. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today I am joined alongside by Rhino Clavin. Hello. Hello. And then back on the controls, doing everything perfect so far today, Mr. Oliver Green. Hello. I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. That's what happens. When when you do things correctly, you get announced immediately. So (laughs) that's how it works. Oh, and then Rhino screws this one up. So off to a good start as always. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be me me next. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, like you do every week. Um, Got a very exciting show for you this one. Uh, Just a little bit before this, uh, we started recording this one. We finally got the Universal Mardi Gras announcement. We were waiting for it last week. Um, and uh, it, it's here now and a little bit to talk about in terms of just Mardi Gras in general. So uh, I'm very excited to go into that in just a little bit. And then also we will have our dining review of Confisco Grill at Islands of Adventure, which uh, we went and dined at yesterday. So a little bit of a little bit of fun with that. And then finally, too, just as a little extra video segment to pull it in there and give us five minutes to uh, take our minds off of everything that's happening with this show. We will also, for those watching this on video, you'll get to hear a little bit of a dining review of um, that Pete, Charles, and Steve had last week at Margaritaville. Um, potentially, it, it's there, Oliver. Okay. Um, it is there. And... Uh, you know, oh, it might be you might get it on audio too. I'm not quite sure. So it is very audio heavy, uh, not not video heavy. But um, yes, we have all of that coming to you on this episode. But does anything anyone sorry anyone have anything to mention before we get going here? Yes, you're looking okay. quite dapper today. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and is that a moon on your tie? That's no moon. That's a space station. So that's a, Lower your display, Craig. Just to, a, yeah, you got to yeah. pull yourself down. Here. It's a Fun little ah. Death Star tie for everyone who's not watching. Um, Just if you watch here, you can see the yeah. murdering of billions. It's very shiny. It's Down, neato Bajito. Downtown. I really like it. We just found it randomly here in Pete's house, and <laughs> I decided to put it on. So why like not? Dobby the house elf. He granted you a piece of clothing, <laughs> and you are free. Oh, uh, I listen. I, I don't have to wear a tie on average, so that's why I don't know how to do it. But let's skip all that and let's talk about universal mardi gras mm-hmm. shall we mm-hmm. we mm. shall we shall okay apparently i'm the only one who's gonna relay the information so we <laughs> no one prepared but me that's fine it's okay uh we have 12 performers coming to universal mardi gras this year 12. Very exciting. So before we talk uh, about who those 12 performers are, let's uh, mention that we have, we've mentioned it before on the show, but Mardi Gras will be a little bit different this year. Instead of uh, taking place on weekends for basically three months out of the year at um, Universal, they are going to run it for 50 consecutive nights starting on February 4th and running all the way through March 25th. And uh, the concerts still are going to be... Uh, no, they're just pushed away on the weekends only, but you will be able to see the parade every single night that uh, you are there or that you may have the potential to visit from February 4th to March 25th, which, uh, as of always, we recommend going to see the parade. It is just absolutely incredible. Get lots of beads there. Yes. Beads? Bees. Bees? Bees? <laughs> um, that's your favorite parade, though, right? Yeah, it is my favorite parade um, of basically everything. So uh, I I really enjoy it. I'm glad that there will be multiple opportunities. Um, it was hard to always get there on weekends 
just to see it. So now I like I like the advantage that we'll be able to go on a random yeah, Wednesday or a Thursday uh, when it's not super busy. Plus, you can like go during the week, see the parade, and like then when you go for the concert on the weekend, you can save yourself the hassle of like trying to run from your spot at the parade over to the concert area, and not worry about getting a you know worry less about. I don't know where my sentence was going. Um, <laughs> I know what you're trying a, to say. You know what I mean? You can stake out a good spot <laughs> yeah. for the concert and over there and be exactly. like, that's my focus today. Yeah. And the other day it can be the... And that's that's a great point yeah, with it. Stuff. Now, it, for, for locals especially, uh, let's be honest, Universal loves their annual pass holders. Um, e- even at the bottom of the article that they announced all this on, they made sure to push and say, you know, become a Universal annual pass holder and be able to get in on all of this as often as possible so um that that is a perfect thing that we will be able to see the parade and focus on that on off nights and then on the nights of the concerts go and specifically stake out a good spot just for that um i'm excited we we talked about whether or not uh the parade would get freshened up this year uh an episode two or back maybe even last year when they announced mardi gras mm-hmm. uh and the dates and it turns out that they are we are going to have six brand new floats this year for Mardi Gras. And uh, it seems like the whole parade this year is going to be themed around mythical creatures, according to these new floats. Interesting. So I should have looked up what these meant. Maybe someone can do that as I mention them and see if they have any, some, some okay, ready, kind go. of good. The Manticore's Majesty. That's, Man, the that's Manticore one. is a Persian legendary creature similar to the Egyptian Sphinx. It has the body of a red lion, a human head, with three rows of sharp teeth, sometimes bat-like wings, and a trumpet-like voice. <laughs> is that what I would talk? It's like, I'm crack my arms. I can't do that. I, I don't know. Trumpeting? You were doing it to the theme of the show as well when you did that. <laughs> like the theme of the Daily Fix. Like, dun, 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, I'm... Daily Fix. <laughs> I'm, uh... What other ones have you got in there? I'll I'll move on to the next one. We're still going on that one. Well, we now know what it is. So the next one is The Rise of the Garuda. G-A-R-U-D-A for any of those. The Rise of the Gouda? Garuda. Just a big cheese. It's not the Rise of Cheese. It's just (laughs) just a big wheel of cheese. cheese. (laughs) Yeah. Here's wonderful. Um, (laughs) They're throwing out, instead of beads, they're just throwing out those single slices that are wrapped in. G-A-R-U-D-A? Yeah, apparently it's the, uh, oh, it's a large mickle thing. Myth- mythical it's a large mythical bird. bird-like creature or humanoid bird that appears in both hindu and buddhist mythology mm-hmm. very interesting so i did not know that one um the next one the dance of the dragon i, I don't I think know. we need to i can google dragon if <laughs> yeah. you need is it is it a what's the chinese fireball Ooh, that's a, well that's the question what type of <laughs> what type of dragon is it going to be is it going to be uh your your asian style dragons like chinese style or is it going to be more uh saxon anglo-saxon Norwegian. dragon yeah yeah I, which one it, it, just from the sounds of it that sounds very very chinese to me and I think that would go in with the feel of the parade, but, you know, just me. Maybe it, maybe it's just straight up Game of Thrones. Who knows? We'll find out very, very shortly from now, less than a month. Um, Phoenix from the Flames. That, of course, that we I think we're all good on that. Phoenix, it's the fire, fire bird. Watch, Dumbledore's pet. Watch Harry Potter. Yeah, you've got to be confused. careful. These, like, it's very Harry Potter. Yeah, that's what I thought. Year. But it is the year of Fantastic Beasts. Well, it's not. It's That was the end of last year. <laughs> Consec- I don't know. We know what you're trying to say. We okay. Know what you're trying to say. And next we have garden sprites. Yeah, we like, know what those are. What are, what are garden sprites? They're like little fairies that live in your garden. Oh. Like, I'm not going to <laughs> 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 Perfect. Um, yeah, so, so garden sprites. I guess, I mean, I, I've seen Lady in the Water, too. So yeah. that works. Paul right? Giamatti. Yeah. Good movie. <laughs> and then uh last but not least i actually do enjoy it it's a it's one of those things that it's it's bad it's but ba- it's entertaining it, well it's not it's, yeah. it's a it's a, supposed to be like a family movie it's only not supposed to be scary. only ruined m night Shyamalan's career forever and the final one flight of the pegasus so they're channeling a little hercules action there i like it so oh it's funny you should horse. say that because i thought flight of the hippogriff like i thought we were still in the harry potter vein well, with you, some of these you know what's i i have while you're announcing all these floats in my head is that um this for a surprise this year at the harry potter weekend they're gonna have a parade and it's gonna be a fantastic beast 
and where to find them parade and these are going to be the floats and they're going to recycle them from mardi gras <laughs> that's all i can think about is that like why did they go with fantastic beasts or why did they go with mythical beasts and now i'm like a lot of these are in harry potter <laughs> tricky yeah. but very tricky I'm, I, 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 I think, think the floats. I just think the throw floats. Throw wands out at people yeah. instead. Someone <laughs> loses an eye. That would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would definitely hurt for sure. But I think um, I think Man, these I new floats it, sound yeah. good. Uh, the last time around, they were kind of based on you know they've done kind of events um, like they had Rio uh, or Carnival from Rio de Janeiro stuff like that um, featured. They had the um, a lot of the steampunk style floats that were about transportation the the time before that that they were uh, doing a little bit of a freshen and update i think this sounds pretty cool i'm sure we'll still see our classic uh our riverboat float the the gator float your um you know uh, all the ones that have to be there every year um but the the ones in between you know it's it, it's going to be good so i'm very much looking forward to it uh now to be not as positive on it um we have the actual concert lineup so i'm going to go through rhino please don't hate on the country music too much in this one <laughs> please we don't need it a- oh man i didn't bring my hat with the straw like i yeah. promised for this one this would have been perfect we, we don't need a repeat of that last week but let's go through the lineup uh start <laughs> kicking off the event on february 4th will be trace adkins which Yippee. um I mean, I do know him. I know his name. I don't know him personally. I go, oh, you do. I know right. his name <laughs> in the country music world, and I don't pay attention to that realm. So uh, that seems like a pretty big get in terms of an artist. Um, February 11th, Neo. I like Neo. So. Neo's, come, Neo's been performed before at Universal. Neo's cool. He, um, February 18th, Collective Soul. So, always, a, always a good one. Yes, yes. Uh, February 19th, one that I didn't know until you had to remind me who they were. Uh, Ex Ambassadors. So, of that hit song. Renegades. And then the one that's on the. Oh my gosh, the one on the radio right now that is super popular and I don't like as much because it's too, like, slow for me. Just I'll sing it. a second. Who else is coming, Craig? Yeah, keep going. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Okay. That. Oh, yep. Oh, well, I mean, I'll help on this one of why they're popular. February 25th, Fifth Harmony. Oh. Unsteady, so, unsteady. Is yeah, the those song. are the, why the Fifth five Harmony girls. Is popular? Oh, I understand why they're popular. I saw them on Dick Clark's Rockin' New They've Year's Eve, starring Ryan Seacrest. They might have been around a long time. I don't listen to pop music in general. I will listen to some popular artists, but. Pop well, music is not my genre. Okay, they've of been choice. around. For, when I say a long time, I mean four years. So okay, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's it's nothing against it. It's just not. It's not my style. I can appreciate people who go out and find their dreams musically. It's just not my style. So that's why I don't listen to them. My jam on March fourth. Cool in the gang. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like I've heard that name, but I can't recall who they are oh, or what they've sung. Can you? My... Can you? Give me any idea. Oh, look at that look. God. Oh. Why, I, that name rings a bell, but I don't know. Give me a song that they've sung. You, are you serious? Yeah, I'm being serious. Celebrate? What? Celebrate yeah. good time. Okay, see, now I know. That's that's all we had to do. <laughs> Come on. No, 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 no. Play no. that, play that funky music. Hmm? Play that funky music. Oh, did they do that as well? It? March 5th, Olivia Newton-John of Xanadu fame. Was that Wild Cherry inside? Who she? No, I'm kidding. I know who Xanadu. <laughs> You've never heard of Xanadu? I know who she is. I the don't know what Xanadu. The most epic roller skate movie ever made. No, never heard of this. Okay, gosh. Yeah, Any, Olivia Newton John. I know, no, no. I know who Olivia Newton John is. I don't know what the Xanadu is. Something to do with roller skating. There was they made a Broadway musical too in the in years of late. Oh well, good to know. Good to know. <sighs> Um, we also then, after March 5th, sorry, I keep going on the Confisco's menu, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, March 11th, of course, the real thing that I'm excited for this concert series, UB40. So, uh, Which they had to explain to me. Yes. I didn't know. Who we that. had to explain that to Rhino of <laughs> Red Red Wine fame. Um, you know. Yeah, that's one I had no trouble with at all. Thank yes. you, Father. You uh, set me up there for, for life with yes. UB40. There you go. Uh, March 12th, Toby Keith. So, very good, again, for the country world. Um, March 18th, Jason Derulo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, March 19th, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Another 
oldie but a goodie and you know they are right Oliver? finishing yes. off okay. the event on march 25th the all american rejects oh. so um i i think i i don't know maybe i i just don't have like a, a finger on the pulse right now i would say either fifth harmony fifth harmony is probably their big name this year maybe jason derulo jason derulo i mean technically i think toby keith is the most famous person that they have um he's one of the biggest country singers mm. Yes, he is. I'm sure. Oh, no, I'm so- not saying. I'm not denying he's one of the biggest country singers, but yeah, I'm. I'm sure someone in chat could back me up on it that um, Toby Keith is probably the most famous person out there. But I, I like I, the song "Get Ugly" by Jason Derulo. I like Jason Derulo. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a Jason Derulo fan. I think he's got a single on the radio right now. But I mean, in terms of like exposure at the moment, probably Fifth Harmony because they were on Dick Clark's Rock and Eve, mm-hmm. but also. The girl just left. One of the members just left the band too, and it was a big deal. And mm. I don't know. That's always sad. But there's no, there's no like crazy. Oh no. my gosh, I can't believe they got that group this year. Like, yeah, actually, I think it was Fallout. It Boy, was right? Fallout Boy and, and Kelly Clarkson before the year before that. Kelly Clarkson was a big get. Um, yeah, I, it's not really super strong this year, but um, yeah, I, I think there's there's definitely uh, there's something out there for everyone uh, based on you know it might not be when you come down. But Parade for 50 Nights Straight, that's good enough for me. I'm very excited for Mardi Gras. So, of course, you'll see our coverage of that coming this February. Um, Yes, you will see that then. So let's move on. Um, I think before we get into our Confisco review, I think I would actually prefer to maybe uh, chime in uh, with that Margaritaville review. So um, while we prepare for our review of confisco grill we'll give you a little taste of what uh, pete experienced when they went to margaritaville so here that is hey guys today we're at jimmy buffett's margaritaville um we just sat down ordered some appetizers um so i'm excited i've, I've been here before but i've never had a meal the nachos the nachos here are epic so we had to order those we also got a uh, crab dip and I'm trying to get into this. Steve, it's like the Steve show. So we need like Steve's head. Um, so we got the, uh, the crab dip, we got the we ordered the nachos. Um, I'm doing the beach club, which is like a ham and turkey sandwich, trying to keep it on the diet. I went for the rancho burger with lots of ranch dressing. And what did you order, Mr. Charles? Uh, I went for the Florida grouper sandwich, and I'm really in the mood for some fish right now, so I'm looking forward to it. So, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I had the Beach Club, which is a club sandwich. So it's ham, turkey, smoked bacon, Swiss cheese, um, and a, an aioli, a garlic, and a garlic aioli sauce, I think, was on it. Uh, $13.99, and it was good. I thought the, uh, it, but what was weird is it only comes on white bread. You don't have an option to do, like, whole wheat or a whole grain or rot or anything like that. Just white bread. So that was kind of a, a disappointment. But for $13.99, I felt it was worth it. thought the... Uh, uh, I thought that the, the, the cold cuts were, were fresh. It's a good sandwich. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so I had the grouper sandwich, which was uh, around $17. I thought it was going to be a little lighter. Uh, to be honest, the thing's a grease factory. So think about if you're getting a burger, that kind of level of grease. It was good, though. Um, it was salty and tangy. Um, the only problem I ran into is that it's pretty heavy on the coleslaw added to it. So it's a bit messy to eat, um, but it was filling. Definitely worth the price, um, and I was pleasantly surprised with it. I got it grilled. Um, usually I go for blackened, but I decided grilled. The fish itself was very well prepared. Um, so if that sort of thing is your thing, then I highly recommend it. Okay, so I got the Rancho Burger. It was pretty good. I, I chose to not go with bacon. They, they do have apple with bacon that you can put on top, but I, I don't know. I don't like bacon on my burger, so I went without the bacon. So it was uh, ranch dressing, pickles, tomatoes, and with or without bacon. Um, I thought it was a good burger for a theme park location, but it was it didn't wow me. It wasn't a spectacular burger that I would you know recommend people getting if they come here. I would say try something else. Um, but it wasn't horrible. I didn't send it back. Um, it wasn't a very juicy burger, and I got a medium rare, which usually is a, a little bit more juicier. But um, overall, it was all right. I didn't send it back, but. I'll get something next, uh, something different next time. Okay, so we just finished up our meal. Um, 
I love the atmosphere here. I like the music and it feels very vacation-y. I, like I said earlier, I didn't love my burger, but what do you guys think? Hey, look, I, you know, the food was good. Um, this is one of my favorite places to eat at City Walk. Always has been. It's really consistent. Again, it's not gourmet food. Um, it's good bar food. Um, yeah, for the three of us, without an annual pass discount, would have been about $112, so it's not cheap. And no one had any alcohol, so um, when you consider that we had two appetizers, three main courses, no dessert, $112 is not cheap. Um, with the annual pass discount, I think it came to $88. So uh, we saved like $14 or something. That's, I mean, so, good, good discount. You know, yeah. uh, no, it would be 102 not 112 Sorry, I'm having trouble doing math. $102, not 112 But still, you're talking $33, $34 a person, right? Yeah, yeah. something like that, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I'm apparently math challenged today. Uh, so it's, I, I think, you know, value for money paid, eh. But it's a, it's a good place, solid, you know, good bar food, nice atmosphere, good yeah. music. I think it's um, a great place for if you're here on vacation. It's a lot you, of fun. You, you don't get to go out to the beach maybe because maybe you're in the theme parks all the time. This is your mini beach uh, vacation. Yeah, exactly. And I understand the margaritas are really good. And I'll say this for being a local. I think I'm the only one of the three of us who's spent their entire life in Florida. The beach theme generally doesn't do it for me. Um, so I was a little worried about this place kind of annoying me. It didn't. The music is not overly loud unless you're at the bar across from the restaurant. Restaurant. Then they kind of blare it. And on the exterior, they blare it a little to get you to come inside. You but if you want to be able to have a conversation with your friends and you don't want to be blasted with Jimmy Buffett, you can still sit down and enjoy yourself. And the beach stuff is kitschy, but it's not so in your face that if you are a Florida native or you're not into the beach scene, you're not, not going to enjoy it. So I still found it pleasant, and I was a little worried about that at first. So Yeah, it's definitely quieter inside than it is outside. Right? Yeah, but, yeah. Well, just in city walk in general, there's a lot of music. Yeah, always but, playing around. But you know what? It's a solid place. One of my favorites. It's a, a it's a regular stop for me when I'm at uh, City Walk. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Okay, so um, I don't know if they're out there watching right now or if they'll ever watch this back, but thank you guys for uh, bringing us that little look into Margaritaville. Uh, I know the last time Rhino and I ate there, we had a really, really fun experience. We a did, lot of yeah. food engorged ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was dragging my feet on that one, and then I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was one of those surprise ones for me. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So um, it seems like for the most part, it still holds up, and I know I've been talking to some people about this. Yes, we cannot take steve seriously at all ever because he does not like anything normal on his burger he doesn't like uh bacon and this one yesterday when we ate at confisco he asked for the sandwich that he got to not have lettuce or tomatoes on it like, because that just makes everything messy was his response um so yeah we just we cannot he's a, he's a cheese pizza chicken nugget very Bologna plain cheese kind of guy yeah, he's a very, very plain, um, so I guess that's good. There are plain people out there in the world who want to know how the plain things stack up. Um, Steve's and, your guy. Yeah, Steve's your guy. <laughs> His you favorite Steve popsicle flavor is just frozen water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being told it's not engorged, it's just plain gorged, so no. there's also that. <laughs> um, so, without further ado, we are going to get into our dining review on Confisco Grill. So, you might ask me, hey, Craig, what is Confisco? Confisco Grill. Well, Confisco Grill is one of two full-service restaurants that we have at Universal uh, Universal's Islands of Adventure. So this one is actually one of your first things that you'll see as you're making your way through the park because it is in port of entry. Um, it's a very large building on the right if you are walking into the park right at the end. Uh, it's almost impossible to miss it. Um, but yes, if you do, that's where it is. Have fun with that. So, um, a little statue of Oliver out front there too. Yeah. So Confisca, or sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that happened. <laughs> so uh, Port of Entry. Um, I, I guess to talk about Confisco Grill, we have to talk a little bit about Port of Entry, and that is that Port of Entry is just kind of a mishmash of this, that, and the other. Because you have to think about it if you've ever cruised before, like it is a port 
in an island somewhere. You get <laughs> off, and I mean, yeah, you understand now. No, like, I, just, I had visions of people walking around islands of adventure, like keeping their hands on their pockets, so like nobody <laughs> rocks. <them. laughs> well. Uh, it, it's got this, that, and the other. It has its big surplus store with everything you could want. Cheap tchotchkes, souvenirs. <laughs> it has your like weird Christmas decorations that are just there. And they're at every island, too. It's musical <laughs> instruments, bakeries, uh, food, dining, this, that, and the other. And uh, because of that, too, at Confisco's, you have a very, very weird menu that includes Italian, Mexican, Asian, <laughs> Greek, and American dishes that uh, consist of grilled sandwiches, burgers, salads, fajitas, pizza, pasta, and it's... I, I mean, sometimes you look at a menu for a restaurant and you're like, they literally tried... Um, wasn't there a Seinfeld episode of it where they tried to convince... Um, was it Babu Bhatt? who he had his oh, Indian yeah, yeah. and they tried to convince him or he had the it, restaurant he had something and, and Jerry told him to put something on the menu. He, or something, right. Well, his restaurant was, he tried to feature every cuisine from every culture in his restaurant. And they're like, well, no, you're, you're Indian. Why not yeah. just, why not make the food, you know, and then his restaurant closes down and he gets deported. <laughs> I know someone's going to correct me if I got that plot point wrong, but this is kind of like that same idea. It just has a weird mashup. Um, but before we get into what we had, what we truly thought about it, I believe Oliver did put together a little bit of a look at Confisco's, the food, the atmosphere and everything. So uh, for those of you who are listening if you want to watch this video then please head over to youtube.com slash wdw info and you will be able to find it there but let's go Okay, well, that was our look at Confisco Grill. So I don't know if you're impressed by it, not impressed. Um, here's where you find out if we were. So um, first off, let's talk about the inside. How do we feel about that? The atmosphere, the 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 atmosphere. So, I just said the atmosphere the twice atmosphere? in a row. Yeah. The atmosphere. Okay, I'm, I'm like living matrix, in a loop. The Matrix I'm just looped. rewrote itself. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what do we think of the inside, um, Oliver? 
So what the, one of the things they try and do is they try and incorporate some of the decorations from the different lands in Islands of Adventure, the different islands um, that you go around. So there's some stuff in there uh, that's very obvious, like from uh, Toon Lagoon uh, and also from Jurassic Park uh, and a few other different areas. And that's nice. It's oh. It sounds like it's going to be this huge like mishmash of stuff, but it actually kind of works the way they do it. So um, that's quite fun. And it's something, because this is the second visit I did, um, it's something that I didn't actually realise until uh, um, Asita pointed it out to us this time. So, you know, props for props for doing that. It made my experience a little bit nicer. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm upset that we couldn't find the... Uh, apparently there was a wand in there to help represent Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, so obviously, some of the decorations are much easier to find um, in terms of the Jurassic Park, Toon Lagoon, Seuss Landing. Mm -hmm. We didn't find that wand that's in there, though. Who knows what if it's the still Marvel? there. Um, I don't think we found anything from Marvel either. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Um, yeah. th this was actually my first time being in here um, and dining here as well, too. Uh, it's just one of those things. It's never really worked out that I've I've gotten to go to it. I think at one point I thought I did it. And, you know, again, I, I maybe my brain keeps rewriting itself because I can't remember. Um, but I definitely did not. Uh, I definitely did not eat here before and in terms of the atmosphere uh i i did find it uh pretty pretty cool for a theme park like mythos it's actually a really really designed well-designed restaurant on the inside it's it's got it's interesting i think there's a lot of stuff around for like children to look at to help keep them uh you know a little bit distracted on oh wow the theming's kind of cool in here but um the the one thing that i believe steve may have brought up uh but i absolutely 100 percent agree on they didn't really like kind of spread out the restaurant into like little nooks and crannies yeah a lot of the main seating was right in one area in the middle that had a very high ceiling which caused the restaurant as it got busier and busier to get very loud because everyone's voice was just echoing up into the ceiling and coming back down so when we got there we were like maybe one of four tables mm -hmm. uh in the restaurant it was very nice very pleasant by the end of it it started to get a little bit loud um but the atmosphere i i i liked it i give it a thumbs up How about you rhino any thoughts on that i think it was fine it was nothing special for me it was like it wasn't bad it wasn't i wasn't like oh wow great i mean we went at a time like you said it wasn't very busy but i can imagine it getting incredibly loud in there because of the way it's seated, it's still part of that kind of. I always feel like they're in this new wave of starting to redesign theming and how things goes. Ever since all the Harry Potter stuff, you know, um, uh, in bringing that immersion into the restaurants a little bit more. Whereas, like, I think this this restaurant does a good job of being what it is, but. Um, yeah, I'd like to see more of like what you said, nooks and crannies, maybe some booths here and there. And, you know, I'm sure that this was kind of made more as kind of we only have two sit down restaurants and we really want to be able to take as many people as we can. So we need the space to be kind of wide open for that. But, yeah, it's they did have some booths in there, and I will say the booths fit the theming a lot better than the tables did. Yeah. They at the tables, and you've probably seen in the video just there, they have these like green and blue chairs, and I feel like that let them down an awful lot. They felt so out of place. I know that seems like such a weird thing to talk about and pick up on, but for a restaurant that did such a good job with the theming and the artwork and you know stuff like that mm. that's up on the walls, the the chairs are. It looks like a child's birthday party. It wasn't yeah. very good at all. Well. I think I want to save service for after uh, after we talk about the food. So let's get in uh, to the actual food portion of it. So uh, we had five of us there. Um, it was myself, Rhino, Oliver, Steve, and then of course Pete's friend Charles joined us as well too. He's uh, he's starting to get back into Universal, so that's why you're going to see him pop up at a lot of the stuff that um, we're doing around Universal mm -hmm. and. Uh, so yeah, we, we had a nice big broad group to really kind of get a, a grip on the menu, order some different things, and that we did. We, we jumped all around this menu. Um, like every time we go out and do a review, we start with a little bit of appetizers. And here we started with two different ones. I'm going to start with, uh, I think I'm going to start with the fried calamari, the Moroccan fried calamari. Threw you for a twist there, You Oliver. did, you did. Um, this dish cost eight dollars and 99 cents it was moroccan seasoned fried calamari and sweet peppers served with a roasted lemon garlic aioli and 
Rhino loves him some garlic aioli. I oh, can tell you sure that. Oh, he sure does. Uh, throw in some lemon garlic aioli. Mm, shut the front door. Shut it. Get out of there. So um, I'm talking, and I can't seem to shut that. myself up, so I'm <laughs> going to keep going on. Uh, actually, very good calamari. Um, uh, not. I, I do want, before you change this photo, well, though, to look at that cup <laughs> on the left. That is, nobody's touched yeah. it. And that cup, <laughs> the bottom of that cup is just under that sauce it is literally like somebody took a knife in the cap took what was in the cap and gave us that we'll we'll have pictures of all the food items for those listening in our show notes at disunplug.com um yeah there's uh, the calamari was cooked well it wasn't overly greasy it wasn't overly squishy uh there was just two problems there was barely it was served on top of um packing peanuts and then the garlic aioli the lemon garlic aioli served with it was like they couldn't spare any more they could only spare one square yeah not even a square though yeah i would say that was kind of a theme as well as you'll see throughout a lot of the items it was kind of like oh we're on rations now they're cutting back yeah i would say very very good food portion size pathetic for this 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 for this yes okay and i i like sauce i like extra sauce um, I know Rhino's the same. If we have extra sauce left over, even if it doesn't go with the next dish you might be having, you don't know. It might work. I might have wanted to put that garlic aioli, garlic aioli, garlic on, aioli. My, Where are you from? on my pasta Jeez. that I had later. Donkeys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm, I like the whatever the sauces are that come out in the beginning. I want to um, maybe save them, dip them in stuff later. Yeah. I don't know. So, um, any other thoughts on the uh, calamari? Uh, mine was more of a personal thing. Yeah. Like, I just like it just ever so slightly crispier. It had a really good taste. I enjoyed the taste an awful lot. And it wasn't overly chewy, which, you know, calamari can be sometimes. But I just wanted that, that like, the outside just to be slightly crispier. It just felt like it needed just a few more minutes in the fryer. But, you know, it wasn't bad. I, I would eat it again. Yeah. No, I uh, completely... Completely on board with that. So, um, what else did we have in terms of the uh, the appetizers? Oh, that's right. Hummus. Hummus. So this is an this is an item on the menu that mm. could be made gluten free if you ask for it. And of course, uh, it is vegetarian. It is Middle Eastern hummus served with peasant bread, wood oven baked lavosh, topped with sesame seeds and olive oil. Six ninety nine for this. Item. Rhino, talk about the presentation of this as well as your thoughts, please. Um, I well, first of all, if you'll notice the shape of the uh, the bread here, there was a debate that it's sort of United States shaped. Um, <laughs> Florida but, looks stubby. Yeah, a little stubby Florida on the end. Um, but I was I was actually surprised um, because they bring it out and rather than like little slices of pita, which seems like the theme park custom customary thing they do um it was it was definitely baked in-house um and uh just one big piece that you kind of tear away some of like non bread because that's what i thought it was at first and um so you get that and the hummus um and a pretty healthy portion of the hummus too it doesn't look like much if you're watching and seeing this picture it looks maybe smaller but that's pretty big i'd say there was more hummus than the side of soup i got and the hummus i thought was actually really good i mean it was standard hummus yeah no, oh, but no, it was very, no. but it was, you could tell that the hummus was homemade. Um, yeah, very creamy. It, it was definitely creamy. It was very fresh. Um, but yeah, the, even the portion size on that, I would say if you're, uh, if you're used to buying hummus in a store, like uh, specifically Sabra hummus, uh, pretty much the go to of hummuses, then this would have been about half of the amount that you would get in one tub of Sabra. Um, but uh, this was the appetizer that our, uh, our server, recommended to us and you know i i think it really was a winner i would go back here and have this hummus again yeah we i mean um, we, we scooped out at the end mm-hmm. like we ran out of the bread but oliver and i were still scooping yeah like, we, the bowl we together. wouldn't let the uh the like, server take the hummus pot away even though it was definitely at a point where it should have gone yeah. yeah so no i was very impressed with it i thought the bread was a nice change actually it was a lot lighter than a pitta yeah it was yeah very very good and again very very fresh you mm. knew that yeah we'll, we'll talk later about it <laughs> <laughs> a pitta a pitta i'm you know what? I can't argue on this one because it's. Are you going to call it a pita or are you going to call it a character from the Hunger Games? Pita. Pita. We had the uh, pita malark. <laughs> we just don't know how to we'll handle. We just name the but. character who owns a bread factory. Yeah. Pita. 
That yeah. seems that seems normal. <laughs> I've only just figured that I made that connection. Now. <laughs> that is oh. Fantastic. Oh, so I, I would say by the time we were finished with the appetizer portion of our meal, um, we didn't have unhigh hopes at this point. We were like, okay, eh, it's well, not. Yeah, they set us up. I was like, ooh, this might actually be it's might. a decent place. Just before might. you move on, though, don't forget Rhino had his soup. He never actually asked for it to be a starter, but they brought oh, it out okay, with yeah, a starter. I, yeah. so. I, I, when we placed all of our food orders, I yes. ordered what i got and it you know the the things below mine said they came you could add a side of a a salad or a soup and i was like oh you know what i'll add a soup to mine and um because it was also listed as an appetizer it was listed as both like Mm, so when you order a side of soup there were two it was tomato potato i said potato and got tomato and then i sent it back and got potato and the potato Soup, like, oh, I was like, mm, that looks kind of good. Yeah. And when you try it, we all tried good. it. Um, it was very <laughs> sodium heavy. So for me, it tasted like um, in the States, you don't, we don't get this in the rest of the world, but you get onion powder, which you put in your yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah. It tasted like they'd used way too much onion powder in it. And it just, it. this sounds disgusting. It was like reminiscent of like when Body someone's order. opened, yeah, like a gym bag. I was like, ooh, not nice. It had the promise that it was good, but the balance like, was off completely. Th- this tastes what my gym bag smelled like. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> smells. So this is, <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> was uh, the hearty potato leek soup <laughs> with hearty. bacon and shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And the tomato is not there every day. That was just the fresh soup of the day. Uh, Four ninety nine if you're just having this outright. I believe it was like two thirty nine if you were adding yeah. it on. Um, oh boy, yeah. You you mentioned that it was very sodium heavy. Um, you know, when you add in the the salty, greasy bacon mm-hmm. on top of melted cheese, and then already, I'm sure they added extra salt in with all this too. Uh, totally understand it. The, the, the consistency was way off for me. It, it, um, like the fact the, that I could eat leak, it with a fork. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you, you, yeah. <laughs> that, that says a lot. So, um, yeah. Don't get it. <laughs> that's my recommendation. Yes. That's, you know, we, but the, the good appetizers, the real appetizers, those left us with a little promise. So, in terms of your uh, mains, then, uh, we kind of have three different breakdowns of what it's in. We have some salads, you have your entrees, and then uh, a very heavy sandwich menu. Um, and so, we have a little bit of everything. So, for example, Rhino had a Southwest chicken salad. Uh, Charles had the Salmon Santa Maria. I had the Chicken Valhalla Pasta. Uh, Oliver had the chicken curry chakra, and Steve went and surprised us all by having a buffalo shrimp and chicken sandwich. But wait for it. Really went off the... Wanted the lettuce and tomato (laughs) removed. Yes, it it cannot... God forbid you put a vegetable in that boy's body. Oh, I think we figured out his bun situation, too. He didn't realize it. uh, He's not working out enough. No, I want to... I want to... We'll start going through menu items. I got to look it up just to double check, though. Um, that could explain where there was the misconnect with him. But um, yeah, we will start on this one. I want to start with Oliver, actually, mm. the with his chicken curry chakra. Do you need me to read off the description and the price for you? No, or not you good? at all. I can. Okay. I've got a fantastic memory. So um, let's see. Or a picture in front of you. I, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give away the secrets. Uh, so yeah, I went for the uh, the chicken curry chakra. Um, it was it was very good. So what it was, it was a, a Caribbean or Caribbean spiced chicken curry uh, made with carrots, onions, peppers, and sweet raisins. Not many sweet raisins, I'll add. There was there was, I think three I counted, um, and it was served say, with a coconut. Yeah, you really can I didn't see, see that. when we were passing the place um, around. Yeah, you can see one in the photo. Um, it was served with a coconut jasmine rice from the islands, which I will add was definitely the highlight of the dish. Coconut jasmine. The coconut jasmine. jasmine. You said it very soft jasmine. and tender. Um, jasmine. Yeah, the coconut jasmine rice was perfect. They Hello. they <laughs> <laughs> they had that down like that was. That was um, the quality of that rice was outstanding, and I know it's just rice, but honestly, I was I was so impressed. It was a very um, it was a tender flavour, um, and it did complement the dish very well. So it wasn't overly adventurous, although it sounds like it could be. It wasn't that spicy. Um, it, 
and it was very, very heavy with um, the cheaper vegetables. You'll see a lot of carrots in there. You'll see a lot of, um, you know, raisins in there and yeah. a lot of celery. Um, yeah. And it was incredibly light, incredibly yeah. light yeah. on the chicken. He likes his flavors like he loves his lovers. Tender. Carrots. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all the snowmen were very popular with Oliver when they were <laughs> so good job I didn't have anything with an aubergine in it that's an eggplant for Americans <laughs> wonderful any other thoughts on it it was thirteen ninety nine, and um, it, it wasn't terrible the, my biggest disappointment with it was not the flavour it was the amount of chicken in there you had these teeny tiny slitherings of chicken slitherings <laughs> 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 yeah. no Gryffindors uh, they looked a little Hufflepuff yeah. in there. <laughs> it was um, a slither I meant sorry if, and if you want to see what he's talking about if you watch the uh, dining vlog we yeah. did for this um, there, which will go up later is I there's a close up of his chicken, my chicken. The proteins in general seemed <laughs> there was yeah. Uh, well, maybe not shady. all of them, but yeah. Okay. Oh no, my protein was shady too. Shady it felt is like, what you said. That's not what I heard. So okay. <laughs> it felt like I said earlier. It was like they were rationing it out. It's like they already had like pre um, like pre served cups. Like you're not allowed to use more than half a cup of chicken in this dish. And it, was it was like, like they like, realized all their chicken was about to expire, <laughs> yeah. and some was expired. So they had to look at him like, okay, <laughs> what can Cut we out serve the good today? Piece. Cut out the good Cut, piece. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, or like when you go when you find a Chinese food restaurant like the buffets, yeah. and you're like, ah, oh, it's fine. Five dollars, all you can eat, no way. And you go in and like the chicken's like this big and you're like Oh, that's probably why. It's probably the parts that they snip off the chicken. Yes. You know. That's that's very that's pretty much on the point. So, um and now that I looked up Steve's situation that's happening, I'm gonna help him with his since he's not here. But as Rhino mentioned, there's Take also a uh there's a dining vlog that will be going up at some point uh, alongside all of this, so that way if you want to prefer to hear their thoughts about their food uh firsthand and right in the moment then you also have that available for you uh steve had the buffalo shrimp and chicken as i said chicken uh popcorn shrimp and grilled buffalo chicken served with ranch dressing cheese lettuce and tomato on a chala bun i believe that's how it is pronounced right chala or is it chala i believe it's coachella you're an idiot (laughs) um chala bread chala bun Someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that. that I'm just going to keep holla. Isn't that the is one? it holla? Yeah, it, it um the the bread. Okay, at at Tusum, when you order the um the French toast stuff, yeah, and they do the burger melt one. They make it with that bread. I, I really it's well, whatever we can. Okay, someone is it is holla. Sorry, yeah, it, like holla. I'm sorry. Who's got bread? Holla. <laughs> Who puts in a silent C? Oh. Come on. A silent C. Hey, ask Harl's in the other room over there. Of all the people, <laughs> Harl. <laughs> Every time I watch The Walking Dead now, I won't be able to. Harl. 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 <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but, yeah. So it, it, <laughs> yeah, you think that's bad. What about the pterodactyl? I love how much this is on a delay for the fact that everyone's screaming, silent C, silent C. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can't. Harl. Harl. Um, <laughs> kind of bread do you like? So oh, yeah, bread. it had that. Um, yeah, as we said, Steve removed the lettuce and tomato because, well, he's a six-year-old girl. Um, he said that this was flavorful, which, uh, you know, it's to me, it almost seems like a weird amalgamation of different flavors. I would never think of putting my buffalo, my grilled buffalo chicken, next to popcorn shrimp. Um, that just doesn't sound appealing to me um his main problem though was with his holla bun um but i think that's because he wasn't prepared for holla bread which is made differently than like your standard bun and as we said steve being that six-year-old girl he is used to like if it doesn't come out like a mcdonald's bun um i i think he would be deeply disappointed (laughs) in it so um get that sesame seed patty yeah, so maybe maybe we'll we'll have to like try to expand his breads um, to get oh some gosh, different stuff totally in there. Go but to some sort of like take him to that. Where's that bread tasting at Disney? Oh, oh at uh, Sanaa. Yes, yeah, Sanaa. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll then. take him there. <laughs> and <laughs> his worst nightmare, I'm sure. But <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was his problem. He did not like the hollow bun. 
Um, but hey, it is what it is. That was thirteen ninety nine served with fries. He always gets fries with everything. I've never seen him eat a French fry. I think in my life. No, because yeah, whenever <laughs> he's done, he like he cans me the. Where did we? We went somewhere the other day. We were doing a dining thing, and he at the end was like fries. Oh, it was Cosmic Rays, which I don't know why he would eat that, but Ugh. um. Always, there's always just this mound of fries, and I'm like, why don't you try something else? Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, so <laughs> moving on, Rhino. Let's go with your Southwest chicken salad. Also, an item that could be made gluten free if you ask, but it is vegetarian. I didn't. How to, or it could be made vegetarian. Sorry. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> the chicken salad's vegetarian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so I could have pulled up the menu and I did not. Um, but I'm just going to I can start help off. you. I'll help you. Yeah, please help. Um, me. grilled fajita chicken tossed over romaine lettuce with tomatoes, cucumbers, roasted corn, crunchy tortilla strips, salsa, and Tabasco onions served with chipotle ranch dressing. For twelve ninety nine, I I dare somebody to find those chipotle uh, those strips <laughs> those thing in that in that photo there. Isn't this wait there? Isn't that what they were referring to there on the left hand side? Those three. Yes. No, they were pitas, and they were like oh. it's like someone took a, a magic marker and drew those black lines on because they were definitely never touched a grill ever. So I'm not quite sure where those came from. Um, yeah, okay, so the bread, the piece of chicken in this was literally. Sorry, we forgot. It's actually hicken. Hicken. This, this hicken salad um, was the thinnest piece of hicken I've ever seen in my life. It was like paper thin. It was literally like hicken had been dressed up and painted, or paper had been painted to look like that. Um, and I will actually back you up on that. The photo that we're showing now makes it look a lot yeah, thicker. You, it, I, it, I promise he's not lying. It was incredibly yeah. thin. In the dining vlog, I do pick it up and turn it around because I, I needed to show you how thin it was. It looks like, like the skin from the old lady and there's something about Mary. <laughs> oh, God, it does. Yeah, the one with the dog. Um, the corn was... Um, it, it, was it was like the amount... That would fill. It was probably the amount, same amount of corn as there was sauce for the uh, for the uh, uh, calamari. Um, there was like six little. And when I talk tomatoes, I'm talking like little centimeter, millimeter sized tomatoes. I didn't see a cucumber until Craig pointed it out. It was about that big as well. And there was n- there was no crunchy tortilla strips, but for some reason, three pieces of pita bread in in there. But um it was probably the worst southwest chicken salad i've ever had it was literally just heaps of romaine lettuce and the part of the lettuce that's like the piece of the stem so it's very very like it's not what you want and you don't want romaine lettuce anyway so i tried to be good and get something like you know a salad but in that like okay dressing on the side whatever be healthier trying to lose weight and yeah because i there was not much to eat here i certainly did um, I would not recommend it at all. I think it is a waste of money, especially when you can go to Tijuana Flats or Chipotle, Chipotle, and you can get um, Chipotle. And um, I do know, I do know how to say Chipotle. I say Chipotle. I eat at Chipotle, Chipotle three times a week. I don't say You're saying Chipotle. the same thing. I, I when I was saying the ingredients of your salad, I said Chipotle. Chipotle. Oh, Chipotle. Chipotle. <laughs> it is. It's got a Chipotle ranch. I, well, I love going home for the holidays and your stuff, you know, in Florida, you hear this stuff a little more than you do in like this area of Massachusetts I'm from. So whenever they <laughs> find something that's very common here, they'd be like, oh, it's got that Chipotle. Chipotle? <laughs> Am I saying that right? Is it Chipotle? <laughs> I'm like, no, um, but, I had a fr- I'm sorry to. I had a friend that, uh, back in England whose mother used to pronounce jalapeno peppers as like jalapenos, and it used to. <laughs> it, it just, <laughs> no one ever corrected her. Jalapeno peppers. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't get it. Thirteen dollars. You can go to a quick service place like those two establishments I just said. Get a salad for seven fifty. That is much more. Um, nutritional delicious and i'm sure just as bad for you or go to chipotle (laughs) 
Well, there's a Moe's. You could go to it. I, I'm I don't saying like without Moe's. leaving the facility. Every, every right. time you, every time you go to Moe's, they always start by screaming at you as soon as you go in <laughs> the door. Welcome to Moe's. Welcome to Moe's. <laughs> it's like firehouse. It's, it's like, like I don't know where to say hello. Just let me get up to the counter. <laughs> it's like oh god, I'm gonna go to the Burger King bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, anything else there? All good. All good. Yeah. We good. Um. Now let's move on. Charles, he had the the Solomon Santa Maria, um, which also could be prepared gluten free if you ask for it. Uh, with this one, we have grilled salmon served with applewood smoked bacon, roasted Brussels sprouts, sprouts, sorry, <laughs> sprouts, um, fingerling <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> I'm still laughing about alapacino. <laughs> topped, <laughs> topped with a Mediterranean caper sauce for twenty one ninety nine. I think even just like looking at the food, we could all agree that this was probably the winning dish. Al Pacino's is the name of Al Pacino's restaurant. His Tex Mex <laughs> restaurant. Al Pacino. Al Pacino's. Al Pacino opens a city walk Tex Mex restaurant called Al Pacino's. Look at Al Pacino's. Say hello to my little veggies. <laughs> Oh, this is probably not funny to anyone but us. <laughs> I want a t-shirt that says Jalapachinos and someone does a logo that's for Jalapachinos cockroach. <laughs> um, uh, okay, sorry. Um, Charles said uh, healthy portion um, for the price at twenty one ninety nine. Expensive, but uh, good size. Salmon was cooked really well. Uh, very flavorful. I don't believe he was happy with the uh, the Brussels sprouts. I think he preferred them uh, roasted a little bit uh, a little bit differently. But said with the addition of the fingerling potatoes, it made for overall a delicious dish. And he walked away. Um, well, it seemed like he walked away happy with it. But then I think the overall experience, he he looked back on it and wasn't as happy on it. But again, watch that vlog if you want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Not that he's a horse, but it's an expression, right? Right. No? It is. Cool. So let's wrap things up on the food portion with me. I, of course, had the Hicken Valhalla pasta, um, the pasta of the gods. I made that joke in the vlog, too. Still bad. <laughs> um, and this has sautéed Hicken breast with fusilli pasta tossed with kale, artichoke hearts, artichoke hearts, sorry, fresh tomatoes, and a lemon upper rosemary sauce, then topped with a hispy abage blend. Mm. How much was it? Thirteen ninety nine. Mm. Uh, actually, really good pasta. It was fun. Fusilli, Fusilli got its name for a reason. It's a silly pasta, and I <laughs> really enjoy it. Um, I give me a pasta dish with artichoke hearts in it, and out of this world go crazy for it i love artichokes i could probably just eat them eat a jar of artichokes in one sitting disgusting i'd smell terrible after you can get those at um, trader joe's actually you can get a jar just like that oh yeah. i know i do i uh, i do that and then at home i usually will make um spaghetti and artichokes together toss it in with a little olive oil mm. it's really nice it's a good good dish you should try it sometime um but not at my house and, uh, you know, I, I actually really enjoyed this. Um, again, suffered from the same problem as everyone else who had uh, poultry as a, uh item in their dish. It was literally slivers. Um, it was embarrassing how small these were. It's not Slytherins, slivers of chicken. It was just sad, so sad. Uh, the amount, and that's the bad part, the amount of pasta that it was served with, it's actually like the perfect portion you could ask for. It wasn't too much. I didn't feel like overly full, especially in a theme park. Um, but if it would have had that real protein in there, that extra poultry that I wanted, uh, I would have walked away thinking that this was a really good dish, but it just... It, it wasn't balanced enough because of that. Flavors, excellent. Really good flavors. I mean, I, I finished it all. I just wanted more chicken with it. So, For those of you watching, just like take a look at that photo and count how many pieces of chicken you can see. We take these photos before we eat, so no one's touched this. I can see two. Well, even then, that <laughs> one piece I'm looking at, the one front and center, it, it, the photo's making it look bigger than it was. And people are commenting a lot on a lot of these things looking yellow. 
And I think some of that has to do with the lighting in the restaurant and the fact that they're all plated on yellow dishes. Yeah, yeah. crazy walls. That's yellow. just what happens. There's yeah. white. Yeah, there's yeah, white balance is, issues but... with these. These were uh, point. These were pulled from a video at a last second because I failed at my job. Um, but my photos will go up, and I promise you, they will be white, white balanced properly, as any good photo should be done. Um, so. I didn't mean for that to be a throw you under the bus. <laughs> it's not. Wait there. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Let's take a look at my photo again of my dish, which has rice in it, which is white. And you can clearly see it is white there. There is no yellow tint. I, I, I do see the yellow tint, though. I don't on my display. I see it yeah. on this one. <laughs> you know, okay. I, just, I, just, I, just, I don't I think you've like, chosen yeah. something that... <laughs> but, um, yes, all their food just doesn't favor to the yellow side. Uh, it, it looked like normal food. For the most part. Um, and so finally, then we wrap things up with dessert. We decided, uh, well, dessert was a strange predicament because uh, our server recommended the brookie sundae that they have. And for those of you out there who don't know what a brookie is, it is a brownie cookie mixture together, um, like baked all together. And this was served with ice cream and chocolate sauce and all that. She highly recommended it. Um, but then there was no menu that came out. It was literally a tray of fake desserts put on a wooden board and pushed in front of us. And she went through the names so fast. Yeah, we, were we like, just kind of uh... like we listened for the keywords. Um, and out of the six different items that were on this board, uh, we saw two things that were worth noticing: uh, chocolate cream cheesecake, as well as uh, the what was it called? The dusty diamond. Um, that sounds like something that the like... peanut butter diamond. Yeah, it was peanut diamond. butter diamond. Yeah, peanut butter diamond. Yeah, I remember yeah, our favorite stripper's name. Craig Williams. <laughs> that's it. That was right. Hold on. I have the receipt here. That was Oliver's joke, name. by the way. I'm not. I don't want. To no, no. That was it. that was it way was too good for me. That was Craig's own joke. No, Peanut no, no. butter the, diamonds. The, the, our favorite stripper. You you yeah. say that word for word. It's because I had the vlog, so that's why I had it in my head. You say that he calls himself Peter Butter Diamond, but then when you're giving your review, you're like, oh, Peter Butter Diamond is where it's at because it, not only is it my favorite stripper, uh, it's also you know. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the peanut butter diamonds um i again we don't know the full price of the desserts we only know what we ordered the cheesecake was 489 and the peanut butter diamonds was 249 um we'll start with the one we liked definitely least and it was i'll say it it was mixed um it's one of those things that we kept eating it despite not really enjoying it and that of course was the chocolate cheesecake um which I, just based on the name of it on the receipt, I think it was like kind of a white chocolate blend on top, even though it looks like milk chocolate. And then the bottom was a dark chocolate cheesecake. Um, it shouldn't have been served the way it's served in this photo. It's laying on its side. On and, a plastic plate. Yeah. And <laughs> on the, its side. the top is fluffy, uh, you know, and or it's whatever. Yeah. And the bottom is super dense. Yes. So you can't really, when it's laying the way it is, you can't really get that. Unless you go th- right down yeah. the middle, which then screws the bottom and the top out of, you know. Absolutely nothing the, the was wrong with the right. flavor with this for no. me. The flavor was spot on. It was, you normally find like any chocolate cakes, whether that's cheesecake, regular cake, whatever. It's normally too rich. This wasn't at all. They'd actually balanced the flavors incredibly well. My issue was when you got a bite of that bottom sponge, it just felt like you were chewing through Play-Doh. It was just so thick. Yeah, it was like it, unnecessarily dense. Yeah. Up, yeah. Well, and I mean, then, that was cheese. That wasn't sponge. That was cheesecake. Oh, okay. But still, it didn't. It didn't match the. It, well, it didn't match the. Wait, which part did you think was the cheesecake? The top part. <laughs> oh my god, no. Oliver! No, oh that my is god. the whipped cream. He's the, never the, had cheesecake. Oh before. my god, cheesecake. The bottom, it makes the, sense now. Yeah, the darker, the Holy darker. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> I've had oh cheesecake god, before. It makes sense it now. Like... <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter. My point still stands. The top was too light, and the bottom was too thick. Well, the top was like a cream. It was like a mousse, a cream. The bottom was cheesecake. It was too, it was too um, cold still when it was served to us. Uh, it needed a little couple extra minutes to kind of warm up and uh, start to, but it, it was it start to be a better consistency. But it, you know, it wasn't. Jesus Christ, sorry. I'm trying to say that less in 2017 to stop offending so many people. But you're giggling like little kids right now. Come on, Ryan, get um, it together. Get it together. Uh, get it together. It Steve. just, you know, it wasn't it wasn't fluffy cheesecake. I love 
I like I like a fluffy good cheesecake. fluffy yeah. cheesecake. Like that's the, me. The whipped. Like, yeah, whipped I like my whipped cream cake. whipped. Sorry, uh, and yes, it is. The C is silent in his kick. His kick. Um, <laughs> his kick. It's his hick. <laughs> well, it it's just whenever it's a C H, you have the silence. His kick. Um, yeah. I like some his kick. His kick. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the chocolate cheesecake portion of it. I didn't like the cream mousse that was on top. That wasn't for me. Not bad still. Um, but the winner of the two desserts that we had, the uh, peanut butter diamonds, that was like, it almost looked like an ice cream bar plopped down on two dollies and uh, doilies. Sorry, not sorry, dollies. What, what dolls um, did you see in this? <laughs> two dollies, but doilies. It did give the impression that you were going to crack through that chocolate shell. Yeah. And you did not. And you didn't. But inside of that chocolate shell was a <clears throat> delectable whipped peanut butter mixture and then on the bottom was like a cookie crunch bottom. This was freaking fantastic. Yeah, um, and this you was said good. this one was only two two right? two eighty nine. Yeah, so yeah, this or is two two forty nine. Sorry, we, we were almost like, oh, should we get some? Two forty nine. I would, and it was a it was a healthy dessert portion. I would say it was the equivalent size of like an ice cream bar. Yeah, uh, I, I, absolutely. I, yeah, for sure. Like a like a ice cream sandwich. Yeah. Only maybe obviously like two stacked on top yeah. of each other. It was wonderful. Can't say enough good things about it. The only thing that put me off slightly, and again, those of you that the are watching this can see it, yeah, it looks like the desserts had like a gold filling on the top there. That's, it looks like <laughs> again, that's a gold foil. Oliver it's... doesn't get out much. He doesn't know what cheesecake is, and he doesn't know how different desserts can be designed differently. So He's... when I said it was presented wrong and it should have been sitting up, did you think it should have been sitting up with the choc- the dark chocolate part on top? No, I did not. I knew exactly. No, I thought it, I thought you meant like we were going to stand it and balance it on the pointy bit at the front. <laughs> it's like new age heating for sure, but I agree with you. That little silver thing, I was like, oh, they left a little tin foil on here. It doesn't look like it was meant to be there. It looks like something else in the pastry case had that, and it fell on it, but it's edible, so they were like, eh. Yeah. I liked it, though. I liked it a lot. So, uh, overall... Um, a few surprises in there. Overall, the food mixed, mixed at best. Um, I, I can't, I can't give it praise. Uh, I think Oliver said it in the vlog the best. Um, it's not like we would ever go out of our way to eat there. We just wouldn't choose to. Maybe if someone invited us, um, mm. but that would be about it. Yeah, and and even then, it would be like, oh, they're already committed to going there. Otherwise, I would try and talk them into. You know, there's so many great yeah. restaurants that are new and that are one of a kind dining restaurants at Universal, just literally footsteps away. Yeah, that so I get to. I've got to ask just quickly. I've never had a chance to eat at Mythos, but you two have. Yeah. Um, as there are only two table service restaurants in the whole park, how does this stack up? How do they stack up against each other? I think I liked Mythos better. Food at better. Mythos better. Obviously, theming at Mythos is better. But I think service was equivalent at both of them, and that was terrible. Yes. Um, yeah. While we were seated very quickly by a very friendly and energetic host. Oh, yeah. She um, was very, very nice. Hostess. Uh, then our server seemed promising from the start. I won't mention any names or anything. It did get very busy very quickly, and I think they were very understaffed. But the simple things you weren't getting excuses yeah the, the simple things weren't getting done um i think at one point i went almost 20 minutes without getting a refill on water the easiest thing to refill just Whoa. bring a pitcher sit it at the every table every time just keep walking through with it yeah. um, i i actually i had a sweet tea and i finished off my sweet tea again you guys dine with me all the time you know how quickly i drink i had one drink that whole meal i had to ask twice for a refill which i never got by the way oh i yeah. thought so, you did get a second one and you'd ask no, for another no refill that was my first one time. and this did i asked twice and i never got a refill of my tea no. and i i gave her a break because it looked like she got very busy but still like and the soup Nazi from Seinfeld brought yeah. out our dishes. Well, that's too. It. there was the <laughs> there was this whole weird setup to like our server was solely taking care of drinks and our orders, and she she got the orders very quickly. And yeah. but then like the food was all delivered by uh, again, as Rhino just said, literally the soup Nazi from Seinfeld delivered our food, uh, an older, uh, a little bit chunkier version. Grumpy. I bet he only knew like 30 words in english if that um and like so for instance rhino mentioned he was given tomato soup instead of potato rhino's like oh it's it's not potato and he's like yeah tomato and then he walks (laughs) away he sets it down and walks away yeah oh oh, 
okay. And uh, yeah. like he knew how to say one word from each of the dish and then sits it down once we finally had to like, you know, kind of work through there. Uh, it, it just, he was so unfriendly he smiled like finally as the last dish was being set down after it's all said and done that's why he was then smiling. he smiles like have a good meal and <laughs> i spit in food it's like <laughs> he just changed 100 percent from that so it, it, that was just not good and then you know after it's all said and done we hand our check to hand the um credit card to to the server and then some random girl dressed all in black that i hadn't seen throughout any of the meal drops it off and says here you go yeah have a great day so i I will say some people were friendly oh i i I checked the time by the way from when we asked for the check to when we got it because it was it was like pete had texted me right then and was like let me know when you guys are on your way back and i was like we just got the desserts. We asked for the check. It was like one fifty, but by the time we walked out of that restaurant, it was like two twenty five. Ooh, yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, service not good. Just and just not good. I can't say anything else beyond that. It it wasn't good. That that also did not make what, where the food was lacking. If the service would have been out of this world, friendly, quick, efficient. That might have bumped it up a little bit, but that really kind of drove the nam the the nammer into the hail. Um, <laughs> the hammer with H's now as well <laughs> into the nail and uh, made for uh, just mediocre, average dining experience at Confisco. And I, unless you guys have anything else to say about that, I think that's all there is to say about that. I think that's all there is to say about that. Yes, there is. That is. <laughs> all there is to say about that <laughs> wonderful well thank you guys so much and of course uh uh you know it was anything we talked about on this show if you want to find out more information on that uh head over to disunplug.com home of our show notes for this show and every other show on the disunplugged network um uh, it's all good stuff out there make sure uh you're finding us and following us on all of our social medias uh it's, it's a good time if I do say so myself, make sure you're uh, subscribing to us and rating, reviewing us on iTunes, YouTube, all that stuff. I know, I know the core of you out there are doing it, but for all those who are on the fence, maybe the ones who are like, don't know if I quite like these people enough to subscribe to them. Um, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't just go ahead and click that button. I promise you will only disappoint you once a week. Um, <laughs> that is my ultimate goal to you. So yes, yeah, so of course you can find all of that stuff at disunplugged.com. We are running way over. I feel terrible. We can't do, we oh, can't resolutions. do resolutions again. We're just running too far over. We will do that next week. I, I swear we are doing resolutions this year. Um, we 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 told each other at the last show last year sure thing, that Craig. we were going to do them. Um, we just we need to carve out a block of time to do that. So uh, we will be back with you though next week for another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. That's going to do it for us today. But remember, Hala is universal. Bye, everyone.